Hey guys, Rich from Richmond Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to this, the weekly bugle. My hair is a mess. I've been wearing a headset all day. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, hope you're all doing well. Um, there is very little to talk about. <laughs> very, very little to talk about uh, today in terms of MCP stuff or indeed Shatterpoint stuff. Uh, we're sort of getting into the back end of the year where AMG give our wallets a little bit of a rest. Uh, gives us time to try and catch up with all of the painting that we've got. I am currently, let me work this out now, I just finished, uh, <coughs> or, or almost finished Queen Amidala the other day along with Miss Windu. They just need basing properly. So I am... A Sabe, two half troopers, and pawns away from being a hundred percent painted on um, on Shatterpoint, which I'm very very happy about. Um, but today we're not painting up Shatterpoint. Um, I put a poll out there as to what you guys would like to see, and at least when I last checked, let me make sure this hasn't changed. Uh, no, it's still up there. So we had over over sixty votes. And the vast, vast majority of you voted for us to paint up uh, the new Doc Ock Sinister Scientist. So this one here, I'll be honest with you guys, he wasn't made up. Uh, he wasn't primed. Um, <clears throat> so I had to go do that really quickly. So I think I've got all the mold lines and, and such. Um, but let's jump over to the camera. Let's take a look at the model. He's a really, really, uh, he's a really nice model. Uh, really, really nice. I do really like him. Let's turn this light on just to give ourselves a little bit more light there. Uh, Phil, hope you're well. Painting stream. Haven't had one of these in a while. Absolutely. It has been a minute, mate. Uh, it's a time of year where AMG lets us spend our money on other people's mini addictions. How very generous. Yes, I have just purchased. Sorry, guys. I'm just grabbing paint as we are here. Uh, I have just actually backed the deceased. Uh, so the brand new um, one from Simon, uh, which is the DC version of the Zombicide. Um, so I've never played a Zombicide game before, but thought I would. Um, so yeah, we will uh, we'll be getting that at some point in 2025. That is uh, that is when it is coming out, guys. Uh, it always makes me laugh how long they uh, they make you wait uh, than. Um, <clears throat> for these uh, for these sorts of things, but um, yeah, I'm just going to pull myself up. If I don't think we need any reference material here, I think we're going to be good. So we're going to be using a combination of um, we're going to be using mostly Vallejo model colours. So we'll be using some flat green for his um, his main body part. We'll be using a mixture of leather brown and I think the flat brown. Uh, for his cloak <coughs> or his cape jacket, I suppose it's more of a it's more of a jacket really, isn't it, than anything else? Um, <clears throat> and then what have we got? We do have a lemon yellow, and we do have <coughs> a German yellow. So we'll be trying a couple of these. But <coughs> for yellow at the moment, guys, for doing a base coat, I and mean, I know this is well, it's not sacrilegious at all, but for doing a base coat at the moment, the Citadel Contrast Imperial Fist is just so, so good um, to do base coats with. So we may even end up, uh, we may even end up using that. We have our trusty palette here. Let me try and show you guys our trusty palette that we've uh, that we've been using, and we'll be using a combination of rosemary and co brushes today where have my main ones gone so in that one here we go so we've got a size four which we'll use for most of the basing and then a size two with a nice tip on it for some more intricate work and then we've got a size one and a size three in here as well that has got yes i am a liquor if anybody hasn't seen me like paint before on stream i do I have a liquor of brushes to get those points in place. And of course, we've got our Chepsy to keep us through and keep us going. 
Okay, guys, right. Let me pull up this really quick. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look at Doc Ock, Sinister Scientist. I think I know. Uh, <clears throat> I think I know the main colour schemes that we're that we're going for, but I do like to ha just have um, reference material up next to me so I can so I can see it. Um, okay, yeah, there we go. Actually, they've gone for a more greeny colour on his cape. So actually, we do have. We do have a German uniform green, which maybe mixed with a little bit of the brown could work, potentially. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll start. Um, <clears throat> let's get some... He's got quite a pinkish tone on his face. Um, so let's look here. What are we going to go for? I seem to have lost some paints that I thought I had. Uh, that is yellow. <clears throat> that's German orange. That's leather. Okay, I think we're just going to actually mix this up ourselves. So we're going to use some of the flat flesh. Um, so this one here. So it's a little bit too uh, orange for my liking. So what we're then going to do is take a little bit of our flat red and then also we'll just lighten that up with a little bit of white just to get that initial base coat down on his face. Um, give these a good shake. This looks this looks really bad on camera, doesn't it? Do the PS4 Ox scheme. It's miles better. Oh, okay. Let me now let me let me check this out. P S for Doc Ock. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if I like that one, Quinn. Because he doesn't have the jacket and stuff, so then it'd be like... Yeah. <clears throat> it's like a dark green, isn't it, and black. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna stick with, I think I'm gonna stick with the uh, the box art, because uh, yeah, I'm not not uh, not a fan of that one. Let's get this out of the way. I do not want paint on there. Um, so yeah, let's mix this through. <clears throat> Just get a bit of water on the palette there. I know you guys can't see this bit, but one of the reasons I don't do a lot of painting streams is. I don't feel like I'm particularly well set up for them um, with with the setup that I've got. Um, but hopefully this is this is okay. But really, guys, this is more just about coming on and having a little bit having a little bit of a chat. Uh, we'll see if we like this or not. We've thinned it down quite a bit. Yeah, I don't mind that as a base tone. I think that's okay. And I always like to start with faces because, you know, you can. I always like sort of work from the outside in. If, if anyone's ever tried it before, painting on stream is really, really hard. <clears throat> Screw the young Zuma, he doesn't like anything classic. He does have a bit of an issue with with classic things, doesn't it, does our Quinn? That's going down okay, I think. We'll just sort of get it in there as well. Probably need a couple of layers of this, but yeah, let me know, guys, if you've um, if you've painted up your Doc Ox from the new core box. You can just tell, like if you look, Doc Ock is a great character to look at for the evolution of sculpts within AMG. Because if you look at the first Doc Ock that was ever released, this might look a little bit dark, by the way, but we will be lightening this up with some highlights. This will be the darkest tone, because uh, I won't be using any washes or anything like that. Um, but yeah, if you go and look at, um, go and look at AMG's first ever 
dock up from the car box and then you have the version that came in the um oh what's it called now the version that came in the rivals pack the first ever rivals panel uh, and then look at this one i it's uh <clears throat> it's it's pretty uh it's a pretty remarkable step up yeah being curious of your thoughts on the 2024 timeline i'm going to be honest justin i have I have refrained, <clears throat> for good reason, from really making anything as a public comment. And there's really two reasons for that. Reason number one is I'm still kind of digesting it all myself. I had a an initial, I would say, knee-jerk that I think a lot of other people had as well. Um, <clears throat> and I've maybe been tempered a little bit so I'm kind of just I'm just making sure that when I do put something out there that it is really the opinion that that I've got um because there's a lot to take in but I will say and, and 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 sorry the other reason why I refrain from doing a video I did record one and then I listened I watched it back as I often do with my videos and it was just ranty it was just absolutely ranty, which I didn't want it. I didn't want it to be. It wasn't the video that I wanted to make. So I deleted the video. Um, and then I did get invited. Spoiler alert. I hope he's okay with me saying this. Um, but I did get invited onto the House Party Pro Protocols podcast. As kind of the um, the non-American voice, if you like, on uh, on the timeline. So I was joined by a couple of other people. We all gave our thoughts and feelings and opinions on it. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so because I did that, I didn't then want to do my own video as well. But I, I, I probably will have to. It feels like one of those things that I will have to do. Um, my honest opinion is it's a really good idea. Just very, very poorly executed is, is what I would say. And that's kind of how I how I feel about it really. I think the pros are the fact that AMG are recognizing and are trying to do something about, we're just gonna use a little bit of um, yellow okra um, mixed with a tiny little bit of brown for the base on all the, um, <clears throat> on all the uh, yellow bits. Um, so yeah, the fact that they're doing something about competitive play is positive. I just think it's a little bit poorly executed from their side. Um, time will tell. And the good thing is, is that as a community, we have control over what we play. But there's just a couple of things in that document that are not great at all. Really, really not good. Um at all really and I'll give you I'll give you an example we're gonna add a little bit of orange to this as well um because I'd like the base to be uh, a little bit a little bit more of an orange tint rather than the brown uh, we're just going to use a German orange here um <clears throat> so there is a there is a term that is used within oh not a term sorry but there is a um there is a part in there that talks about tiebreakers and what will be the the tiebreaker for the event and for some ungodly reason they've started out with strength of schedule which is fine that's you know absolutely no problem with that whatsoever that is a pretty standard thing to have as a as a tiebreaker uh, in in any sort of tabletop games then it's victory points. Again, pretty standard. And then it's random. The it's it, it's random. Um Brush Licker is a title on I can't read that because of the little bloody thing in the bottom of my screen here. Let me go to my other one. Brush Licker is a title. It's stupid, right? But I can't read your comment, Glenn. Because there's a stupid little button that hovers over it 
in the studio and you can't get rid of it and it's really annoying. So when somebody else puts a comment up, I'll be able to actually read what you've what you've wrote. Um but yeah, it's 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 one of the tiebreakers is random. So what that means is you can play the whole event and if it's 32 people in the event, it's three qualifying rounds or three Swiss rounds of qualifying and then the three finals with eight people going through and making the cuts. So there are going to be people who have the same results, right? Three and one or two and one or whatever it is, right? And then if you're playing more, obviously, you go above 33 players plus, play six rounds, irrespective of the number of players. So you could end up with a whole bunch of people all on the same X and X, right? Uh, oh, cheers, Justin. Um, but strength of schedule makes sense, right? But then if you've got two people with the same strength of schedule, it goes down to uh, victory points. So how many points you scored, again, makes sense. And then the third tie is literally random. So you can be in a situation where you have the same margin of victory. Oh, so you have the same victory points, the same number of wins, the same strength of schedule as another player. And according to AMG's rules, the way that you decide which of those two players is not to take another stat from the game, like maybe margin of victory, but is just random. So you randomly draw them. And then they are the people that make the cuts, which I just think is utterly atrocious and really shows a lack of understanding, I think, from AMG's part around how serious some people take these games, especially if you go into something like Adepticon and you're getting ready for a, a three day event at Adepticon and you're participating in. Uh, why I don't know why it's so far away over here, but um, my uh, my wet palette, I mean, and you're participating in that for three days, and you don't make the cuts because somebody rolled a six and you rolled a one, like that for me is utterly ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. Um, Apologies for having you talk about it when you don't want to. I agree with everything you're saying. No, no, no. It's, Justin, it's not about that I don't want to talk about it. Like I say, I had a knee jerk. And I'll be honest, I haven't got round to re-recording the video that I recorded. It was it was very, very ranty. And I didn't, like, once I'd finished recording it, I didn't feel like it was adding anything to the community. There was nothing constructive about the video. Hence why... I wanted to take the time and just sort of collect my thoughts, have another read through it, talk to a few other people about it, use them a bit as a bit of a sounding board, um, and then come back with another video. But then, as I say, I got invited onto the House Party Protocols podcast, which I recorded uh, yesterday. Um, so I kind of felt a little bit bad, like, you know, there was no point in me putting out my own video when it was going to be on Will's Will's podcast. So I kind of saved my opinions and views for that. But I don't I don't mind sharing them. Now I've had the chance to sort of collect my thoughts. I don't mind sharing them on here at all. Um, my overall thoughts are very very much, mate. It's it's a great idea. It's great that AMG are. Um, at least acknowledging the fact that there is a competitive scene and that this isn't just a beer and pretzels game for a lot of players, which is how they've kind of always talked about the game before. Um, so I think that's positive, but there are quite a few negatives in there for me. Um, least is the is the structure um where's glenn's comment brush licker is a title on path to windy licking i gather by windy licking you mean window licking 
um, on that one, Glyn. But yes, I am definitely a brush licker. Do you know, I quite like this yellow. It's not too bright. It's obviously mixed myself, so I'll never be able to recreate it ever again. I am not like the guy. Have you guys seen that guy? And he's on like loads of TikToks and things. And you take him something, you hand him it over, and then right there and then in front of you, he... How's the focus on this? It doesn't look great, does it? Is that any better or is it worse? Um, yeah, and then he um, he he mixes the paint in front of you by hand, and like gets it absolutely spot on. It is it is crazy what he's able to do, uh, absolutely crazy. And I'm terrible for going off camera when I'm painting. This is what I mean, guys. I'm also the kind of painter that paints like this normally. I'm nearly 40. My eyesight isn't quite what it uh, what it once was. So I do tend to paint quite close up. I'll even share a... Where's it gone? I even have, guys, I have to use for some things my little magnification glasses. Um, I have a friend who writes down every mix he ever makes. Oh, my God. God. Um, yeah, I would never do that, Phil. Never, ever do that. I do, I've just mixed this paint now, and I have no idea what's gone into it. Like, absolutely no idea what's gone into the paint. All I know is, is that if I add a little bit more water, it'll last a little longer, and I've got some more yellow I can add into it for the highlights. That is... I will say that that is one of the biggest things that I found from going down the route of a wet palette rather than a traditional palette is that ability to save um, save paint. So when it comes to adding the highlights, um, you, you still have that paint there. Like that's one of the things that I really, really like about a wet palette, especially after I've, or since I've stopped using... Um, Washers, because I don't use washers anymore. Uh, not not in miniature painting anyway. I might do, um, I might do for some board games that I've got. I'm, I'm painting up The Witcher at the moment. Um, board game um, to do some live streams actually. So I I uh, I am still planning on doing some Witcher live streams, even though even though you uh, you didn't want them, you didn't want it today. Maybe I should have just got myself a little thing and just left it there. And I could have mixed it. Um, but hey-ho, it wasn't to be. Let's put him there. <clears throat> Let's let him dry a little bit. I think that's the first coat of yellow down on everything. I just I like to get the first base coats down on everything before I move on to the next part. So that's German uniform. We don't want that. What we want is this one now. I love this green from... Uh, from Vallejo. Really, really like it. Uh, we may even darken this up a little bit for the first Passover, if you like. In fact, I think we definitely will do. So we'll just add the tiniest little bit of black in there and then we'll build up from that so that that green then becomes our sort of almost final colour with a couple of, of highlights um, as the sort of final part. But I have adapted, as I say, my painting style. I used to just use washers on on everything, but I I just hate the... I just hate the inconsistency of them. Um, and the keyboard flashing is legitimately upsetting. I don't know why it's flashing. Let me look. Why is it upsetting you though, Quinn? There we go. Are you happier now? I mean, you're not a man that I'd ever consider to be a happy person, but happier at least. So we'll get this down. We'll see if we like it. Mm, maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure about that. 
I mean that's going to be the that's going to be the darkest part, so it might be okay once we once we lighten it up. Um, I've started using inks a lot rather than washers. Yeah, I've, I use, I bought myself quite a lot um, of inks, but I love these Dela, why don't I use this one? I love these Dela Rowney ones. What I found is, again, um, they, <laughs> some of them have amazing coverage and like, you know, you'll put a white down and it will cover everything in white and you can't see anything. Others are a little more opaque. And it's very much trial and error. And they're a little bit less forgiving. But I do enjoy painting with them. I have enjoyed painting with inks quite a bit. Um, you get a bit more time, I would say, to play around with them. It's almost coming out like a contrast paint, this. It's what you use as well, Dazza. Yeah, I found them to be really nice. I found them to be really, really nice. The brown and black inks are the best. Yeah, I've got the um, the one that I really like is, I think it's like a Burnt Umber. Yeah, here we go. This one, the Burnt Umber, is really, really good. I use this um, instead of, and I, I, use, it, uh, I use it about... Um, I use it. I found air Air airbrush flow improver is a really good thing to thin them down with, and I use about a four to one ratio, and use it rather than streaking grime, um, and I think it yeah for me it, it it looks really really good and it it's very very effective, uh, the burnt umber I do like that quite a lot. Um, it is now flashing again, Glenn. So he'll be happy about that, won't he? He's upset by very little things, is Quinn, isn't he? As we know, he's a he's a delicate little princess. But we love him all the same. This isn't quite the green that I was going for, but I feel like with another with another layer and then highlighting it up. I think it'll be okay, he says with almost no conviction whatsoever. We do have a hard stop, guys, today at about quarter to eight. So my plan is to stay around until then. Uh, I don't think we'll get the... I don't think we'll get the whole model done by then, but I think at least we'll have, we'll have the base stuff down. Um, and we should have an idea with some highlights. I still don't know why they decided to give him a trench coat. It worked for that movie because he didn't have a suit, but when he has one on, it's just... Yeah, it is a little bit weird, isn't it? And there was definitely no option to not have the trench coat on because all of the connecting parts at the back go into the trench coat, which is, yeah, a little bit annoying, but... I don't mind it. I think it's okay. As I say, we'll we'll try and get like a German green, I think, for his trench coat. Maybe mix in with a little bit of grey. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Grey with some um with some German green I think could work could work quite well. Oh my word. I nearly guys, I nearly that nearly happened. That very much nearly happened just then. Um, what brand paint do you use? I have moved exclusively to GW paints, but I have, I, sorry, I used to exclusively use GW paints, but I've moved on to AK and Vallejo. I hate standard GW paints. I still think, as I think, as I said at the beginning of the video, there's a couple of their contrast that I think work really, really well. I mean, this over white is amazing as a yellow with a coverage is just absolutely brilliant. Um, but I am pretty much exclusively on the model colour from from Vallejo. Um, I've got a couple of other bits in here as well. 
But I mean, I've got some AK, again, some AK interactive stuff. The white is really, really good. Quinn actually got me onto, onto that one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much... I do have a couple of the game colour ones. But again, from, from Vallejo. Um, and then I do like... And I know it's a bit of a weird one. But I do like the glistening blood and the dry rust effect from um, Army Painter. I think, I think they're pretty good. Like, I think overall Army Painter are are bad paints but you know credit where credit's due when they've done something that's good so yeah i quite like those effect paints that they've got just those two the other ones are are not great um cherry paint max yeah exactly it, it, it very much nearly was justin absolutely i'm just gonna get another layer of this yellow down as well particularly on the boots where we really want it to be standing out I do apologize guys I'm I'm really not set up to do the best like there's some guys out there who do painting videos and they they have an absolutely amazing setup uh, and it like I say it is one of the reasons why I don't do it a lot um but hopefully this is okay I get it it goes in and out of focus a little bit but I also want to be able to actually paint it well um, and if I don't sort of bring it up to me every now and then for some of the more intricate parts, um, it will go horribly wrong. So that's my excuse. And I am indeed sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, not sure so far. I've nearly done it again, guys. Jesus Christ. I've tried some protocol prints, but found them quite watery. Not great for finer details, yeah. GW pits are an abomination unto mankind. <laughs> contrast paints work great. But which, yeah, I mean, I rarely use a contrast paint out of the bottle. But I know people that do. But I still put contrast paints on my palette. And I'll water them down and, you know, I don't use contrast medium, by the way. Like, that's the most bullshit thing in the world I think I've ever seen from GW is, oh, you need to use contrast medium to water down your contrast paints. Like, absolutely not. I shall be using... Now, is that a bit yellow or green? Yeah, it's green. It, yellow even. Uh, I shall be using water like I use with every other paint. Um, like I say, with the exception of inks, I I do like... Um, I do like using Flow Improver, of all things, for inks. Um, I actually exclusively use Flow Improver, uh, at least for the most part anyway, in my airbrush, um, just because, oh, get that bit there, um, I do have the paint thinner from Vallejo, and I just think the Flow Improver works so much better. So that if any of you guys out there use, use an airbrush, uh, but I've definitely found that for most things, Flow Improver is just overall better I mean it looks fucking horrible at the moment I'm not going to lie absolutely horrible guys we're going to leave this there one second I'm just going to let that dry um, bear with me one second because I've just heard my door go and I'm the only person in the house at the moment and I am waiting for a delivery so I will just be right back in like literally three minutes
Okay guys, we are back. It was a delivery, but it wasn't the delivery that I wanted. So boo-hoo. I thought I had a new uh, a new model turning up. A new Lego model turning up, even. Uh, not for me this time. Christmas present for my daughter. But never mind. Never mind indeed. Yeah, I'm not I'm really not happy with this green. I'm gonna give it another another coat and see if if it comes out any better. Uh, I'm adding in a little bit more of that flat green into the mix. In fact, if I did that, if I did that here, you guys would actually be able to see the palette as well, wouldn't you? There we go. That's probably not a bad thing to do, is it? So I have just added in a little bit more of that green. Oh, in fact, I may even just start highlighting this up now. That is a lot of paint on my brush. These things, guys, as well, I buy these from, they're just like massive, like, rag things um, from my local garage. They're £1.50 each, and they're amazing. They're just like kitchen roll, but, like, half the price. Um, so, yeah, let's start to highlight some of this up and see if we like this green any more. I don't know if we do. Actually, okay. That could... That could be alright. That could be alright. Um, do you know what, guys? Let me put my... Let me see if this makes the quality any better. If I do this... Is that helping at all? With the image quality, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Do you know what? We're not going to use this as the highlight. We're going to go, we're going to go all over into this again, and just lighten the whole thing up. It's a little bit too dark for my liking. Maybe keep the darkest shadows in there. Um. Bets on two minutes. What the what's the over under? Did you time me, Justin? How did I do? I have no idea. We're missing. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna have to take this over to me because there's a bit here that I just wanted to get into. Um. So yeah, I really do enjoy painting, though. I find it very, very therapeutic. But it's also one of those things that I can be very very easily distracted from and can um really need to be in the mindset to be able to paint if i'm in the mindset i can sit and paint sometimes at night and i will be four five six hours in and it can be the early hours of the morning and i haven't even realized other times when i'm painting i'll start and i'll just not be enjoying it at all and i pack it in after a very very short period of time we're going to try this german german uniform which i think kind of looks a little bit like his cloak uh, we are going to be mixing it up though with some that is a lot of medium the other thing guys you can't see this but you're about to hear it is my vortex for mixing paints. I absolutely love it. So give me a second. I'll mix this up. Just because the medium in there is absolutely terrible. I haven't used this colour a lot. But the first squirt that came out there. If you guys can see that was just pretty much all medium. Which uh, yeah, is not a position I want to be in. Let me stop doing it on there. That flashing light is back for Quinn. My girlfriend thinks I forgot about her and I hate her when I stop texting. My <laughs> Truth is, I do, yeah, you can just get taken away by it all. Um, like, I can sit there and you'd be glazing up and layering up and before you know it, it's like I say, the, the early hours of the morning and um, yeah, you don't know where the, uh, you don't know where the evening's gone. It's very, 
very easily done. So let's get some of this down. That's looking a lot better, but we do want to, in fact, that might be okay as the base coat, just as it is. Let's have a quick look here. What are we missing from that? So let's just have a quick look at that color there. What are we missing from it? Could be a little bit of brown, maybe. I think it might be a little bit of brown. So let's take, let's reinvigorate this paint here. Let's add some of that in there. Maybe a little bit more green. I'm sure the way I use my wet palette will send, give some people palpitations. Yeah, I quite like that. Yep, I quite like that colour. <clears throat> Just watch your highlight damage video. Awesome video. Love to see that Medusa is top five. Been playing in humans a lot after the update and they are incredible. Love them and they are my primary team. Uh, Aaron, um, yeah, I think I think Inhumans are in a very, very good position. And I think what I think what often happens with a lot of characters in this game is let's take Medusa for example. Like she got a nerf, right? There's no there's no other way to to look at that. She is not as good of a character as she was before. I actually don't like that colour. I think it needs to be more brown. Um, she she is, you know, she's nowhere near as good of a character as she was previously. Um, but people seem to take that then as well. She must be a bad character. You know, if she's not as good as she was before, then she must be bad. And my take on her is that she's always been very, very good. She just got tempered down to be more like she should have been uh, so she wasn't so egregious and let's just use a quick side by side with that oh yeah I definitely prefer the top definitely prefer the top colour um, so I think she's always been good and now that you've got Black Bolt in a position where he is a very very good character now very very good five threat I still don't think you're going to see him out of affiliation um, really anywhere. I still think that's the only place for him. Um, but I think Inhumans are in a very, very good spot, um, which is a shame because you can't use them in the new timeline format. I've just realized, guys, as, as a right-handed person, what I should have done is have my camera set up on the other side and then it would have... My hand wouldn't be in the way almost every time I, I paint. I will try and I will try and avoid that. But let's be honest, guys. You're not really here for my painting prowess, because whilst I would consider myself a reasonable painter, that if I put the effort in, I can have some good looking models. You know, I've won I've won painting competitions before at events and that sort of thing. Um but generally, I'm just trying to get my models to a reasonable tabletop standard. I don't want to sit there and spend hours and hours on a uh, on a single model. Um, I say that probably probably three or four hours per model is is generally where I'm at when it's a when it's a miniature from a tabletop game. Obviously, less when it's you know, something like a, a character from a board game or something like that. But yeah, I definitely prefer this. I definitely prefer this colour for his for his uh, jacket. His trench coat, would we call it? I think it's a trench coat. Um, let me finish this off before I start chatting again. Just so that we've got this first layer down on here. I will say I was very, very impressed with how good AMG have got with mold lines now as well. Um, I think they've done a really, really good job um, putting mold lines in places where 
they're less, far less visible. I always still like to try and, well, I always still do um, get rid of mold lines on my models wherever I, I can see them. You know, I'm sure there's always a couple that get through, um, but I do like to, to get rid of the mold lines. Actually, um, <clears throat> let me know, chat. What, what do you guys think of mold lines? Because I, in my opinion, I think mold lines should be like getting rid of mold lines for me is tabletop standard that's kind of how i see it um but i've seen some commission painters before where they have not they don't get rid of the mold lines and i find it really really strange um that they choose not to not to do that for me especially if i was painting somebody else to of paying somebody else to paint my models, I would expect mold lines being gotten rid of as like a an absolute bare minimum for the preparation of the model uh, before it was being painted. But let me know in chat. Do you guys do you guys go through and get and get rid of mold lines? I can see there that Dazza definitely does. Um, I used to be really bad with it. Like I would I would prime a model and then like very very lightly. And then dry brush them. Because um, then you can see... As soon as you dry brush a model... Like a black model with a with a white dry brush... You can just see all of the mold lines... So, so clearly. And I got really OCD at one point... Where I used to do that to every model... Before actually priming them properly. So I would prime them. I'd then get rid of the mold lines. I'd then reprime them... Um, so I'm not that bad anymore, but yeah, I just hate to see them when, <clears throat> when it's not there. Uh, I get rid of the most of them. I'm not so good with gap filling. Yeah. I've tried all sorts for gap filling, Quinn. Um, I've used liquid green stuff before. I've used normal green stuff. I've used, I think it's milliput, but, um, unless they're really bad, like really, really bad, um, I've just found that like the paint itself can often fill them in. You know, once you've actually got a couple of layers of, of paint on there, it it sort of works okay. Um, but yeah, I, I do I do hate mold lines, um, and I will I will try and get rid of all of them where possible. But let me know what you think. Like, if you were paying. If you're paying for a commission painter, or indeed if any of you out there are, are commission painters, if you are, why on earth are you watching my stream on painting? Because I ain't no commission painter and uh, don't be taking any tips from me. But if you were having your models commissioned and it was just tabletop standard, would you expect the mold lines to be removed? I think for me... It's definitely a yes. Um, but I'm intrigued as to what what everybody else's standard is, right? Because different people have have different standards. They expect different things. And I'm always intrigued as to whether I'm just absolutely nitpicky. Or if, you know, the majority of people are with me and they expect certain things to be done on their models. As, you know, that would classify them as... As tabletop standard. Sprue glue, sprue glue is very good at gap filling. I don't know where my sprue glue has gone actually. I've got a... Because um, I use... There we go. I use this for bases. And the extra thin normally for models. But I have actually just recently run out of the extra thin. So I do need to buy some more. But um, yeah, sprue glue is absolutely amazing. For anyone that doesn't know what sprue glue is... You basically take all of your leftover little bits. So I always keep all my leftover sprues. So these bits here. You pop them in. Something like this. And then leave it. Give it a stir every now and then. And it gives you this really, really good, really, really strong glue. Um, that works really well as I think it was... Uh, who was it that said it? Um, Dazza said, 
sprue glue for for filling uh, filling gaps in is yeah really really good indeed um, it does work really really well if you're paying for assembly then more than removal should be part of the service yeah that's fair had the, had the claw with the test tube fall off a couple of times already the claw oh on Doc Ock itself yeah I I'm going to be honest with you I never quite get it when all these people talk about like Oh, it's really difficult to build the model and stuff. Like, I've just found that if you use a good poly cement, um, so not super glue, you know, the old adage of if it's on a sprue, plastic glue, um, and you you put glue on both contact points and give it 10, 15, 20 seconds on both sides to just start melting the plastic and then literally just hold it in place for five seconds, 10 seconds. Once you've, um, once you've actually put the two contact points together, I've never had a problem with it. Um, I know like a lot of people hated the B ones from the shatter point car box. But again, I mean, I, I, I put together the B ones from, Star Wars Legion for my son and they were definitely better in the Shatterpoint box than they were in the Legion core box. I'll say that. Um, was using Pop Sem but didn't want to... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I literally, like, pushed it right in at the back and then just sort of rearranged it and because I, because I had the head... So obviously there's the sort of three separate bits here. You've got the head part has two parts to it and then the one claw, so three bits in total. I glued the head together and then left that for about five minutes. And then, yeah, like I say, just literally, um, just literally like put it in place, let it set a little bit and then just adjusted it slightly so that, I mean, I feel like that's, you know, that's somewhat there kind of, where it should be feels like that's almost dropping into the bottle um so i was i was fairly happy with that anyway let's get let's go around again and get make sure that we've got good coverage on this jacket has anybody tried because i am intrigued about them and apologies guys i'm going to just bring this up to me a second just to do a little bit more Of an intricate part. Um, I'm intrigued if anybody has tried um, the Duncan Rhodes paints, the two thin coats, because uh, obviously he started back up on on YouTube like years after leaving um, Games Workshop, and I've heard mixed things about his paints. I know he did a Kickstarter with them on. Um, I chose not to back it because I kind of figured that well. <clears throat> you know, you'll be able to buy them elsewhere. Um, and I've backed a lot of things on Kickstarter. And I just, I just, I've fallen out with Kickstarter a little bit, he says, after just dropping 200 quid on the new Deceased. But I just hate that thing of like, I give you my money now and you'll deliver me a product in a year and a half's time. Like, I really, really love that part of it. And I get that that is the whole concept of it, right? You are essentially funding the development process to some extent. But, yeah, just really... I just don't like waiting. If I've paid money for something, I want it instantly. Um, the Kickstarter made over uh, one million, so they seem... Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like I say, I know it's very, very popular. Um, but, yeah, so... Dazza says, I've used one of the two thin paints. I've used one of the two thin paints. Okay. Um, any uh, any instance? Kickstarter is terrible now, in my opinion. All flash, no substance. I My issue is, is there's no accountability. And actually, I've been thinking about this. I think over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do... 
Because, you know, it kind of quietens down with the whole MCP Shatterpoint news, hence why we're on here painting today. Um, and, you know, there's only so many videos you can do that are kind of from your own mind. You know, we've just done the the damage video and who's the deadliest character in in MCP and stuff. There's only so many of them you can do. Um, or at least there's only so many I can do anyway. Um, so I was thinking about ranking my top, my, my best and worst Kickstarter purchases. Because I've had some great purchases on Kickstarter. But then I've also had some really bad experiences as well. Um, particularly with one of the things I really hate. And I think, again, there should be some accountability for this. And they shouldn't be allowed to do it. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to do it, but they managed to get away with it. Um, is when you buy something and it's like Kickstarter exclusive. Like for me, something that is Kickstarter exclusive should be just that. There should be no other way other than on, you know, the, the secondhand market and that sort of thing. You know, people are always going to buy things and, and, and put them on eBay and whatever else. But other than the secondhand market, for me... I don't think there should be any other way of being able to buy anything that is Kickstarter exclusive. And I've seen it so many times where I think the, the last one I saw it with was, or where I noticed it was um, the X-Men, the Simon X-Men uh, Marvel United game that I backed. And they had loads of stuff on there that was Kickstarter exclusive. Like absolutely loads of stuff. So... I got a little bit of FOMO and I was like, well, I need to, I need to buy everything then if that's, if that's what I'm going for. Um, and I ended up then seeing in, I think it was a Smith's Toy Superstore, which for anyone in the US is like our Toys R Us now because they've gone bust over here. Um, and there was like a couple of them in there. I'd been into a game before and they had a couple, which is a, it's like a, it's mainly a, a computer game store, but they do all sorts of like hobby and things now, like D and D, and they'll sell paints in there and stuff. And I'd seen some as well, and I was like, "Well, that's really annoying because you, I find you pay a premium for purchasing them through Kickstarter. Like I know you're supposed to get them at a better rate, but I just find that you pay a premium for getting them early. And then when you see them in a store and they still have the Kickstarter exclusive logo on there, it's really, really annoying." Um, and you know, to coin a phrase from uh, from the great Peter Griffin, it, it it really grinds my gears, as they say. Um, I just find it very very annoying indeed. If they're charging a premium for Kickstarter exclusive, then sure. If they are needed for the games or to complete the collection, I kind of understand having a timed exclusivity on Kickstarter. Uh, I'm not sure, Michael. Man, if I'm buying something that's Kickstarter exclusive. Then, like, if I sell you something that's limited edition, one of a thousand, and then a year later, I re-release that, I think that's pretty shitty. Like, I think that's really shitty to to do something like that. Um, but, yeah, Kickstarter, I have a love-hate relationship with. Sorry, guys, I'm just waiting for all this to dry before I carry on. Um, yeah, I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. I think, you know, I think in some instances it can be something really good i think it started out as a great platform for people to be able to develop stuff on but there is so much trash on there as well like do we really need any more kickstarters with stl files on there like really like uh, yeah um i don't value limited edition at all i say and that's fair enough like that's absolutely fair enough <clears throat> uh, but you know for me personally i get i get a little bit annoyed uh a little bit annoyed about it. but like I say I have I have just bought into the deceased um one that's just come out um uh, Phil convinced me that Zombicide was a good game so uh yeah I decided to uh, to go with it so yeah maybe um maybe I do that maybe I'll do a video around my worst Kickstarter experiences that that could be uh that could be fun and fill the void of lack of um, lack of MCP and stuff that's out there. 
I'm just going to put a quick black over on these just to box them in on the tentacles. I am not doing non-metallic metal. This will be black and it will be dry brushed very lightly with a silver. Like I say, guys, I'm going for a tabletop standard and um, yeah, non-metallic metal. I like the idea of it. Like I can do it, but it's such a time consuming thing to do that um, I often just, yeah, it's, it's not for me. Let me know guys, do you guys use, do you guys do NMM? I've seen some amazing ones before that look really, really cool. Um, but for me, I, ju I just, I'll be honest with you, I can't be asked. Like I really can't be asked doing it. It's just too much. I've got, I've got so many models that I, I've got to paint. The thought of like taking each of these tentacles and doing them as NMM, just like horrifies me completely. Uh, don't blame me for, don't blame you for my purchases. <laughs> That's fair, Phil. That that is indeed fair. Um. You're not putting a reflection on each section. You're not a real painter. Fair. I will I will counter that with I am a lazy painter. Um I did I did sort of get into the whole slap chop thing for a little while, but I just found it was very, very hit and miss with the results. Um Oh, I know it is crazy, Eric, but you know that there'll be somebody out there who's done it. Um, but yeah, so I did get into the slap chop thing for a little while, and I actually had some pretty good results with some characters. Like, I painted my entire Winter Guard with NMM. Uh, sorry, with with NMM, with slap chop, and they looked, other than Dark Star, I feel like they all look really, really good. You know, I've taken them to the tournaments and things before and people have gone oh they're painted nice um and you know you feel a bit guilty because they took you know 10 minutes each to paint once you've put all the base coats down and stuff and the the actual slapping of the chops um or the dry brushing part anyway um but i just find it to be very very inconsistent and leaves like a a bit of a dark finish to everything you know, just gone back in my chepsy guys as the uh, as the as the paintbrush. Be very very careful about that one. Um, so yeah, don't use slap chop anymore. And again, it's like I think it's a great way for somebody to get models on the board really really quickly. And I think it does look better than just putting contrast down. Um, and I think it can look okay. But for me, I'm kind of a, a bit of a traditionalist traditional -ist. I tend to get get all my base coats sort of blocked in and then I'll go through and start doing highlights and and other such things um, for me personally that's just how I how I prefer to do it and for me personally I think it gives a a better end result in the in you know in most cases um, I tried chrome effect on Doc Ock 1, never again. That is fair. That is very, very fair indeed. I think I've watered my black down a little bit too much here, but that's fine. Because we actually only really need it in the recesses. And then we'll use, like I say, we'll come back over. We'll use a dry brush. And we will um, pick out all of those... Uh, all of those little metallic details um, and let the dry brush do the work. Dry brushing something that I I really got into um, as a as a painting method. I started watching the Artist Opus guys. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, Quinn, I think you know him, don't you? I can't remember. I know he owns part of Element Games over here in, in the UK. Uh, but I started watching them and and got into dry brushing for a little bit. I did get bought the the dry brush set, which is really, really nice. Um, but again, I found it a bit of a faddy type thing. 
Like, I think it's fine for some things. Like, I don't mind it to do a really, really nice, quick, easy metallic thing. Um, but I generally prefer to to paint again, kind of the the traditional way. If there is a traditional way of mini paint in there, there probably really isn't anymore. But the metallic base with black contrast on Zombie Ock. Uh, and that came out pretty good. Yeah, you can do it the other way as well. I don't mind that, you know, using um, using a, a metallic paint first and then using like um, a contrast black or I even don't mind using the, the grey. Is it Basilicum grey, I think it is? Is, a, is. is quite a nice one for for metallics. Um, and again, I've tried that. I've used um, painting brown as a base makes gold bronze copper look better. I agree. I think it gives it a lot more, um, a lot more warmth. I would say to it, to the to the model, or to the to the metallic parts. Um, definitely give it a lot more warmth rather than uh, rather than black. Sorry guys, you notice I go quiet when I'm concentrating a little bit more. I just don't want to get black on this trench coat and ruin that base coat. Um, mainly because I've run out of the, the paint. I've pretty much used all of it up now. And because I have no idea what made it up, um, I'll never be able to recreate it. Phil, I need your mate to come and take notes every time... Uh, Every time I mix a paint. Uh, using contrast to make alloy look. Alloy look of metallics. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I actually don't mind painting um, a gold in that way. I did um, a... I think it was C-3PO for Imperial Assault, I want to say. It's either Imperial Assault or... Or Star Wars Legion. I think it was Imperial Assault. Um, and yeah, I definitely need to move this camera next time, guys. So it's at the opposite side of my of my hand. Um, but yeah, I used... Um, I painted it as silver. And then I used a... A wash. Um, basically, and built up layers of wash. And it gave a really, really nice effect to the model. And gave a lot more depth of colour than just putting down a straight gold. Um, I think that may have even been a Sarastro um, little tip. Because obviously he has all of the Imperial Assault, or a lot of the Imperial Assault models on his channel for uh, with painting guides on there. So I'm almost certain that was a little tip from him. But I couldn't be... Couldn't be a hundred percent sure, but I did. Uh, I did quite like that. That one. We're going to try and avoid uh, the bottle here, if we can. Um, we'll probably end up hitting it with the dry brush, but I don't want to get it. I don't want to get it black. Um, C three PO has a very white gold look on part, so that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and obviously. All you had to do then was just ignore his um, ignore his one leg that is uh, that is silver, which is the correct way of having C three PO. So, guys, you may have noticed that there was a a pull up for what we were doing tonight. This would normally be our show talking about miniatures games, either Shatterpoint or indeed. Star Wars Legion, not Star Wars Legion, Jesus Christ, Shatterpoint or um, Marvel Crisis Protocol. But it's fair to say that other than the announcement of timeline events in Marvel Crisis Protocol, there isn't a whole bunch of stuff out there. So I thought, well, let's use this time to do something a little bit different. And I think I spoke about painting up Sabe which we may still do on, on another stream. Um, painting up Doc Ock, which is obviously what you guys voted for. 
but also doing a playthrough of either the Witcher game, which I will be doing on stream anyway. I managed to, that was a Kickstarter that I backed. I think it was Kickstarter. I, I'm, I'm almost certain it was, but it was a Kickstarter I backed a while back. I've had it on my shelf for months now. You guys may have seen some of the opening videos that we did for it. Um, and it's a game that I only just managed to play for the first time um, earlier this month. And I've got to say, guys, as a one-shot game, like RPG-style game, it is so, so good. Really, really enjoyable game. Um, my mate Paul, who's been on the channel before, he played it previously. So he took me through and showed me the ropes. But there's a really, really nice solo mode as well. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. So we'll be doing some playthroughs. It's all set up on the on the gaming table at the moment. Uh, like I said, we've got some characters painted up for it as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, in the next uh, next couple of weeks, we'll do some live playthroughs. It'll either be live or we'll do it as a recorded video. And then the other thing that I uh, I suggested was to see if anybody wanted to see the um, Star Wars deck building game, uh, which on the on the Discord we have been absolutely hammering at the moment. Um, really, really enjoying that game. It kind of turns the whole idea of a deck building game on its head. You don't build your deck before you turn up. You build your deck whilst you're in the game and you share that deck with with your opponent. Um, really, really nice, quick, easy to learn game. Um, I think I showed Quinn it. I had one game uh, the night before. The next day I played Quinn, showed him how to play it. And I think that from there on in, we've given about five or six demo games ourselves as well. And we are planning on running um, an event on it as well. So if you do like Star Wars, if you do like your deck building games, um, it is on TTS. There is a great mod for it uh, on TTS. Um, we will be uh, we will be doing some of that as well. Uh, so we'll put some videos out there in the next coming weeks about how you play the game and things. And then we'll be starting signups for the event um, to probably run for the month of December. It's really nice and easy. You know, it takes about 30 minutes, if that, to play a game. Um, so, yeah, nice, nice, easy paced thing over the month of, uh, of December where you maybe don't have time to play um, a lot of uh, a lot of tabletop games. I think it's coming on a bit, guys. I do, I do like that grey green that we went with, grey greeny brown colour on there as well. Um, Let's have a quick look here. How many Legion models? Oh, I have so many Legion models. Um, I have as well, mate. I've got um, an entire um, entire Empire army uh, or Imperials. Uh, I have pretty much everything that they released up until like a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Uh, I stopped playing it. I had a huge amount of seps because my son played seps. Um, and then I really got back into it when they released the Shadow Collective. Bought everything. I think I bought four Shadow Collective starter boxes. Um, I bought the Rebel speeder bus things when they were still at like $75 a model. And now you can pick them up for like 15 quid on Amazon. Um it's, yeah, for me, it's just not a good game um, or a game that I enjoy uh, playing. I much, much prefer um, prefer Shatterpoint, uh, but that's just because it's, it's my style of game. Um, obviously, Legion is still very much alive. There's still plenty of people out there playing it. So, um, so yeah, all, all power to them for doing so. Okay. We need to find an orange. And I think probably German clear orange is going to be the one. Guys, I need to bring back the Vortex because uh, this hasn't been used in a while as well. So if you can hear it in the background, I, I do apologise. Party buses are great. Yeah, they're not great when they were $75 a pop list price though, Sean. And I bought two of them. And then... Um, 
stopped playing the game. That was uh, that was a little bit brutal to say the least. But um, they are very very good in the game. I will uh, I will that. I'm using a lot of red tones in my Doc Ock. Very interesting, Sean. I'd love to see a photo of that. And as you can probably guess, guys, we will be announcing the painting competition at the end of this. And I wonder, I wonder if you can guess who the subject matter is going to be. Um, yeah, I think you can pick those party buses up now for about, I'm sure I saw them for like, maybe not $15, but like $25 on Amazon. Like, I was just, I was so annoyed when I saw that. Um, and at the time I bought them from who was at, at the time the sponsor of my channel as well so I was getting them at, at a reduced price and they were still still ridiculously expensive for um, for what they were so uh, yeah I didn't I didn't enjoy that one bit let's mix up a little bit of this orange we're going to go in with some brown as well and then again we will bring that back up using some of the orange trying to get that ginger effect i'll just get my my picture of quinn out for reference for uh for the gingerness i don't think he's in chat anymore but <coughs> excuse me he'll probably be annoyed by that which is why we say it Nathan, hope you're well. Clear the subject matter. We'll be locked. You're the bestest boy for beating Doc Ock. <laughs> Absolutely. Love me some Lockjaw. He does so much work in so many lists that I run. He is, uh, he is most definitely the bestest boy. Let's get a little bit of this flat brown out and add it in because I do want to darken this orange up just a little bit more I don't think we quite need to go black no I think that's about right there um, but yeah he is he's such a good character in Marvel Crisis Protocol like I think he's definitely underrated as a, as a character that's the wrong brush um, he's definitely underrated as a character and yeah I think he's for me I just love him to bits. Like he can fit in so many rosters. Um, my love really started for him when I was first playing Brotherhood, um, because turn one he could generate power. He could then yeet two buildings into each other, um, size three into a size three, or even a size three into a size two whatever it was um and then generate a power for every single member of your team and that just turned on um turned on so much stuff yeah i could see cosmo being added um at some point as a as a guardians member especially now he is or she is i suppose um, in the MCU and has been quite prevalent in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy films uh, over the last couple so all the, at least the the holiday special and Guardians Volume 3 so I could definitely see Cosmo go in there they've got some you know there's some nice things they can play with with the whole um, telekinetic side of things could be could be quite cool so uh yeah wouldn't wouldn't hate seeing that would she beat out lockjaw as being the bestest boy i re i very very much doubt that i know quinn quinn is a huge fan of cosmo from playing the um sorry guys i'm just going to bring this up to me a second from playing the guardians of the galaxy game that came out now i know he absolutely loved that game I thought that game was utter trash, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, for me, it was just held your hand through absolutely everything that you had to do. And I don't like that with games. You know, if I play World of Warcraft, 
I'm playing the original World of Warcraft where you had to read quests and you know the game actually challenged you rather than held your hand or hold your hand all the way through it. But um, each their own. I uh, I hate. There's not a lot of modern games like that. Action games that I'm I'm a huge fan of. Um, I do if I play computer games now. I'm generally sticking to more strategy based games. I love me some Total War Warhammer, which is really good. And the game I've been playing a lot of at the moment. If you guys have seen any of the videos, they don't do particularly well, those videos, but I didn't expect them to. But um, I absolutely love uh, Bannerlord, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. And I'm doing a playthrough at the moment where I am playing as, the, as an Ironborn. And I like that. I think that's pretty good coverage on there. Playing through as an, iron, uh, an Ironborn and uh, only paying the iron price for everything that I purchase, um, obviously with the exception of of men, because that would be almost impossible, I think, unless all you did was recruit prisoners, um, which would not leave you in a in a particularly good position. Um, Total War Warhammer is amazing. Yeah, I like how they bring all three games together, and uh, and it creates one big game. I I really, really do like that. I think they did really, really well with it. Um, I don't really know what to do with his boots. They don't quite have the yellow coverage that I was that I was wanting. Um, but I think they're okay for the moment. There's little bits of his trench coat that I can see we haven't quite got. Oh, also, guys, I got a new... Uh, I got a new Apple Watch strap the other day. There we go. So we're representing the Rebels here. But then when we do that, we've got a nice Darth Vader uh, watch face on there as well. So I was quite happy about that. I tre trekked myself the other day in the uh, the Black Friday sales on Amazon. I've been wanting a new, a new watch strap for a while because I really don't like the ones that come with them. The sort of plastic and neoprene ones they really really um cause me to get dry skin um so i saw this one in the sale and was like oh i quite like that so unfortunately they didn't have a mandalorian one which is the one that i would have gone for um but i still like it all the same um run total war uh, Total Warhammer 3 was a bit of a disappointment though. I think it was at first, but then when they released the, what's the big grand battle things, I think it got better. Uh, but it definitely wasn't as good as, as one or two. Um, I only have Total Warhammer 1 through 3. I play Phantoms back in the day, so it's so amazing and nostalgic for me. That's one of the reasons why I really like it, Sean. Because... Fantasy was really the first game that I got into. And I was really excited about Old Worlds coming out. And uh, and then I found out that all the models are the models that they released 30 years ago. And they're not updating anything, which I don't know if that is true. But that is the, the rumor that I heard. And I was very, very disappointed about it, to say the least. So I don't know. We might We might buy into Old World. Um, we'll just see. We're definitely not covering it on the channel yet. I want to kind of see once we get a little bit closer to to release date, which I think is next year at some point. Um, oh, Three's campaign is terrible, Michael. Absolutely terrible. It is boring as hell. Um, oh, you've got to go through this portal and you've got to do this. And yeah, the story just wasn't good at all. But I do love... What's the name, guys, of the campaign in, like, the big, not camp, yeah, like, the big campaigns that you do? Is it Grand Alliances? No, not Grand Alliances. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But, yeah, I don't mind that. And it's pretty cool. Um, 
It just gets busted. The game gets busted every time they release a new um, a new faction. Like the Chorves at the moment, they're like I think some of the best units in the game because they're the newest units in the game and they haven't been balanced yet, or they hadn't at least since last time I played it. Um, fantasy just didn't have sales. See, that really surprises me. Like I've always preferred Fantasy over. Um, over 40k um <clears throat> grand campaign that's the one yeah for yeah age of sigma i really really don't like really really don't like age of sigma it bores the absolute shit out of me five percent of their income at the time that is crazy like, that is absolutely crazy i I would have thought it would have been much, much higher than that. Um, but I suppose it's because, you know, that's the game that I always played. So therefore, you kind of just assume sometimes, don't you? And it's the game all my mates played as well. So I suppose sometimes you can be in a little bit of a of an echo chamber. Um, but yeah, I'm quite surprised it only made that much. But then I've seen like so much hype around um, around the old world stuff, like... So I'm quite surprised that, that it was that low. Just going back in and just blocking in. I don't know why I'm blocking this in with white. Because I need to dry brush these metallic parts. Once we are done. So yeah, let's hold off for that. I suppose it's in there. Again, the dr the brush nearly went in the uh, the glass of Cherry Pepsi Max there. That's always fun. Um, most people had their armies at some point. New armies weren't popular. Yeah, I was I was a um, I like playing Dark Elves. Um, I liked getting lines and lines of crossbowmen. I like I love the repeater bolt throwers. And just raining down hell on my opponent as they uh, as they came in. I will say that I I never played, um, I never played. Um, what's the word? I never played any Warhammer game to the level that I play either MCP or Shatterpoint now. Both in terms of volume of games, um, understanding of the game, but also. Um, even just my ability in the game. Um, I'd like to think that I'm I'm fairly au fait and, and, and fairly good at, um, at Shatterpoint and uh, an MCP. I seem to uh, I seem to uh, think think that's that's a fair statement to say. Um, Dark Elf Player 2, excellent. Fantasy's barrier to entry was so high, actually. Yeah, I think there was a lot of... There was quite a big barrier to entry, but I think you can say that for most GW games, right? Um, I'm going to use a little small Artist Opus Series D dry brushes now. And I'm kind of... I'm going to sort of overbrush a little bit. So it will be a dry brush, but it'll be a bit of an overbrush as well. Uh, the reason I've gone for the smaller brush is... Just because there's some smaller parts on here. And I want to try and not get the metallic paint absolutely everywhere. Uh, we're just using a, a dark silver. And then we'll probably just go through and highlight this up uh, sort of in certain areas. With a, a shining silver from uh, from Vallejo again, so I'm not even doing like a normal dry brush here. It's just like I say, more of like a an overbrush, just making sure that we keep going in the di against against the direction of where the um, the little nodule bits are, so that we don't get paint into those areas 
I'm not sure what I think about these artist opus brushes. Like they're a great gift. Like you know, my my partner Ashley, she's like, you know, what would you like from the kids for Father's Day? And I was like, oh, these would be quite nice. So I got them. You know, I got them in a nice case that said Happy Father's Day on them and things like that. But um, I don't know if they're any better than any other dry brushes that I've used before. Um, I mean, they're definitely better than just using makeup brushes, I would say. But I believe these are, and I found this out afterwards, these are just the Rosemary & Co brushes that are rebranded. Like, I'm pretty sure I've read that somewhere as to that's what they are. Um, which always feels a little bit like you've been cheated, especially when the Rosemary & Co ones are cheaper. Um... But uh, but yeah, hey ho, it is, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, if the same people who worked on Horace Heresy worked on Old World, I'll be giving it a hard pass. I have not played Horace Heresy, and I have zero intention of doing so. I was just really excited for Old World when I first saw it announced because I was like, oh cool, you know. I'll get to play my dark elf army game. I mean I don't I don't have it. I need to you know I need to buy and paint one but you know that I'm not a huge rank and file kind of fan but you know being able to play my dark elves with some updated models sound like it'd be really cool. But like I say when I found out and it might be misinformation but when I found out that they were just going to be the same models from previously which doesn't doesn't um surprise me whatsoever like the levels of laziness going on at gw is crazy like you know me and quinn talk about this a lot the models that we use for um battle in middle earth um the the, the middle earth game like those models are older than quinn a lot of them and they released that new dark elf or that new elf box and the only model they changed was Elrond. Um, Warcry is a decent... Yeah, Warcry is one that... Um, Warcry is one that, again, I was like, oh, that's more my kind of game. Um, but then... I just don't like GW. And I think Daz just put there the way that... The way that... The way that AMG treat their customers... It feels like, you know, for the most part, actually, no, for, it feels like for everything that they do, for the, mo I will say for the most part, that they have their customers' interests. Obviously, they're a business, right? And they have to make money. That is, you know, that's the, the main part of it as well. But it feels like that for the most part, they have the customers' interests at heart and everything just isn't a cash grab. Whereas... I don't feel like you could really say that for for GW. You know, the fact that they released, what was it now, the number of them, like 19, 20 new Crisis cards and made them completely free. So imagine GW doing that, right? Imagine GW releasing all of their, their missions. I don't really know what they have in, in 40K or whatever else, but... Just making them free. Like, you know, every time there's a an update to a codex, it's a new book that you've got to buy, you know, and you end up having to spend as much money on codexes and rule books as you do on the game itself. Whereas, you know, again, you look at AMG and here's a, you know, living rule book. So everything's online. Um, you don't need to buy anything separately. All the rules for all your characters are on the cards. And if they are changed and the cards are changed, guess what? You get a card that you can download for free. Or it'll be an errata on the forums. Like, I feel like they do a lot of things good. And it, it makes me feel like they're a good, um, a good company. And yes, they're a company. They have to make money. But it doesn't feel like everything, like I say, is just a, is just a cash grab, which 
I do get that feeling sometimes with uh, with a, with with uh, with Games Workshop. I, th I don't think that's an unfair an unfair thing to say um, about them. So yeah, it it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, we're going to use a little bit of this silver again now. We're going to get our one second. Sorry about that, guys. You didn't need to hear me sneezing loudly on stream. Um, we're going to get a size zero. Also, guys, you'll notice I'm using my dry palette for my metallics. I don't ever put metallics on my um, on my wet palette. Um, I don't know if other people do. Um, I just don't like the idea of the metallic pigments mixing I feel like it would just reduce the life of it to some extent we're just going to try and block in his glasses here without getting the silver paint everywhere we can tidy it up if we if we need to obviously my hand is nowhere near as steady as it used to be even even going back like two years three years it's just nowhere near as steady as it used to be and it is harder painting on stream guys as well um, it is much, much harder because you're trying to keep it in shot. Whereas normally I'd be like turning it upside down and doing all sorts with it. Um, I, I will say, Michael, I think AMG with X-Wing is... Or AMG with any of those products that they inherited... I feel like it's a little bit unfair to them because I think they got dumped with them uh, by by Asthma Day. Um, I think if they had the choice, personally, I don't think they would have taken them because I think what they have right now is too much for one studio and a studio of the size that they are to run with. Do you know what? We are actually going to just fill these in completely. And then we are going to use a little bit of the contrast over metallic method to, uh, to add those in. There we go. Uh, yeah, they definitely did. Not their game. They got done with them. You know, X-Wing had already gone through, what, two editions anyway. Uh, so you had two different game modes running there within one thing. Like, I think I think that was a bit of a a bit of a shit show and 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 wasn't great to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use guys a cheeky little bit of um, frost heart color for the vials. Because I just really, really like this colour. Um, X-Wing and Armada are both not huge money makers, so putting some of their limited resources towards them wouldn't make sense. 100%, right? And, you know, they had... They had um, Shatterpoint on the way as well. Like, you know, what? which... Put yourselves in their shoes. Which product are you going to be more excited about? The one that you've built from the ground up or the one that you have been lumbered with like and I think that's I do think that is the the case um but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't support them uh, we will go over this with some metallics afterwards as well to block in the um to block in the sort of outline of this but um but yeah, you know, I think uh, which one would you be more excited about? It's gonna be, it's gonna be your own baby, rather than a baby that's dumped on your doorstep and you've got to look after. Um, 
So, yeah, and, and, you know, is that an excuse? Absolutely not. Does that make any X-Wing Armada players feel any better about their game not being supported particularly great? Absolutely not. But I think it's the truth. I think that's absolutely the truth and the reason why it doesn't. Um, and again, I also think and believe that um, AMG is too small of a studio to run the number of games that they have. Um, I think with just Shatterpoint and MCP, I would still argue and say that with the size they are, that they would be a bit too much for them. So adding all of these legacy ones as well that they needed to learn about and things, and yeah, I can I can get why people would be annoyed at the lack of things from them, but I, I, I do really get it from from their side um but again i don't i don't personally believe that was a them decision i think that was a an asmodee decision um so yeah again i have nothing to back that up whatsoever guys that is just my own personal opinion um i don't have any any insider info or anything like that that is just my my pure personal opinion on there. I'm gonna pack that up for a second. I'm gonna get out a little bit of red. We'll use a flesh terrors red contrast paint. And we're just gonna pop this into those lenses of his um, of his goggles. And I think, guys, we're probably going to leave this one here for now. Um, what I'll probably do is I will come back at some point. Uh, probably not on a live stream, but I will post. Uh, I will post an update on the Discord, in the forums. We need to do a lot more work on him. We need to layer him up. Uh, we need to put some of those highlights in. Uh, I'm not 100% happy with the green um but it is it is what it is um like i say guys i do struggle to paint on stream it is much much harder um but you know it was more about it was more about having the conversations with you guys and the um and the painting being being a background to it please do not take this as a painting guide in any way shape or form i'm sure you could put a wash over that right now with all of those base colors down i reckon you could put uh what an agrax earth shade maybe wash down and then just go back over and bring the bring the um bring the colors back up and i think it'd look absolutely fine uh but for me personally i i don't like the dark glossy look that it leaves so i will be just going in and and laying layering these up and i may even um use a little bit of inks to do a little bit of black lining on here as well. Uh, I'm sure the green will turn out. Yeah, I think I think once we build the highlights up on there, Sean, I think the green will look will look better. Uh, let's switch back over to my beautiful face for a second. Um, so, guys, yeah, let me let me just turn this camera off a second because that is very very bright and uh, it's getting quite hot now as well. We'll get rid of this, which is just my tripod. Oh, I am becoming an old, old man. Um, I have models that I spent a lot of time and effort and money on, which are useless now. I, I mean, I think that goes for a lot of games, right? Like a lot of games end up doing that. Um, and it's one of my hopes that it doesn't happen for... Um, for MCP with the new timeline rules. That was one of my concerns because they called it the premier format. People see that and go, well, if I'm running a ranked event, this is the list I need to use, yada, yada, yada. But um, but yes, alas, guys, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me on this sort of impromptu live stream. Like I say, I want to try and consistently do something on a Wednesday, but it just gets a little bit boring when there's nothing to talk about. So 
we maybe start to mix it up a little bit um, and do some other things like some painting. We'll maybe do some playthroughs of different games as well. Um, but let me know in the comments. There will be no live stream next week. Um, will there be? No, I'm, I'm in London next week uh, with work. So there won't be a live stream next week. But we will be back the following week um, to, to do more live streamy stuff. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, head over to the Discord. Big shout out to all the Patreons. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can do as do so as well. There's a link down in the description. Uh, it's a pound a month, guys, to help support us. You'll get priority access to all the events that we run um, and all of the other things as well. So if you want to go down and, uh, and do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now. Oh, no, sorry. Painting competition. Guess who it is, guys? I want to see your Doc Ox. So painting competition is going to be Doc Ox. Um, any version of Dr. Octopus um, is absolutely fine. And what I'll do once I finish painting this up, guys, uh, which actually now I've got it close to my face with all the lights off, I'm actually a lot happier with it than what I than what I first was. So that's fine. Um, so yeah, show me your Doc Ox um, in chat, any of the three versions or indeed third party versions as well. We do allow them. Um, and we'll do a double announcement on the next Bugle for the winners because I haven't brought up all of the other ones from last.